Hi everybody. How's everyone doing? Um, we'll wait for a few more people to join us, but I hope you're doing well and hope everything's going okay. Um, it's been an interesting couple of days. Uh, I'm waiting for my video to load, so let's wait a second. Let me try one more time. I'm going to go out and I'm going to go back in. And yeah, hey, there we go. Um, well, for right now, we've been doing it every day. And then, um, I don't know, I'll have to see how next week goes once I actually start teaching my classes and everything. Um, I might move to maybe just a few times a week. I don't know. Um, if you guys want me to do it, I'll keep doing it. So, hi, Martha. Good to see you. How are you? Um, let's see who else. Hi, Tandy. Good to see you. Sonia made it. So, did everyone have a good weekend? Did you have a good Sunday? even though I know it was kind of gloomy. Um, the outdoor project I had mentioned, um, yeah, we did not get to that because it was too wet, the ground was too wet and moist. Uh, so we worked on other projects in the house. So, hi Alexis, how are you? Grace, <laughs> hope everyone's doing well. I'm so glad you joined and we might have a few more new people. Got some sad news, but I'm okay. All right, well, uh, Martha, if you need to message me privately later, please do. Um, I'm always here for you, so you have my number. You can send me a message through Facebook or through uh, Instagram, so I'll be thinking good things for you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Alexa's got a fever. Okay, you, well, you keep us posted. You let us know. Um, yeah, I'm getting scared that some of my friends are having symptoms, but again, it's like, do you go get tested? Do you not? Hey, German. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing okay as well, so I haven't had any symptoms, um, so I'm hoping that I have not been exposed. Um, I did have an outing today. I did not want to leave my house, but uh, they sent an email to all of the district. Natalia, good to see you. I'm so glad you joined us. Hola, como estas? I hope you're well. We are just getting started, so uh, I was telling people about... Um, that I went up to campus today. I don't know if anyone else did any of the faculty. We got an email that we had today was really the only day before the lockdown tonight. So hopefully you guys know that you have to stay in. They are probably gonna start issuing fines to people who are out unless it's uh, something serious or related. Hola, good to see you. Um, but, you know, we'll just take it day by day. I know my boyfriend is closing his shop down for the week. I don't know, about two weeks. Dorian, good to see you. Hope you're well. <laughs> and, um, you know, thank goodness he is going to keep his employees, you know, still pay them a salary. But Harry Hines is just basically a ghost town where all the shops are. A few are staying open, but I hope by the end of the week they close because you have to think about your health. I understand wanting to run a business, but you have to consider your family. So, yeah, my connection kind of cuts in and out, so that's fine. If you have to close out, Grace, and then go back in, that's totally fine. Yes, we missed you too, Dorian. I hope you're well. Good to see you. Alrighty, well, um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about my outing. By the way, um, does anyone notice anything I've changed in the background, anything I've added? If you see something, just shout it out. Um, I try to change a couple of things. It's almost like a Where's Waldo. So if you've been on the... Um, on with us before, um, you might have noticed I've moved a couple of things. So just just shout it out if you see anything. Okay, well, um, so I went to campus today, and by the way, um, it's on complete lockdown. So if you're a student and you try to go up there, they're going to send you away. So there was one entrance. I had my, my faculty ID to get in, but even my boyfriend was not allowed on the campus. He had to wait in the car outside. So I went in, um, and of course I forgot the keys to my office, but thank goodness a kind police officer <laughs> let me in. So it felt almost kind of normal, like, oh, I went to campus, I forgot my keys again. I seem to do that at least once or twice a semester, so that's how that goes. So I went in, and it's almost like, what do I need? What's essential? What do I need to take home? Um, I decided to take home, and don't tell anyone, but I have a refrigerator in my office. I decided to just load that up. I had a cart because I'm afraid if the power goes out or something, it it, it has a little freezer and it might leak and cause problems. So I'm like, I don't want to have to deal with that. So I just brought it home and who knows, maybe I'll find a use for the, the mini fridge here at home. Of course, my teenager wants it in his room, but if we put it in there, I will never see him again. So <laughs> not gonna happen, not on my watch. 
Yes, the Frida bag. Yes, uh, German noticed it right away. Good call. Yes, this little one. And I always think of Sonia. Uh, my boyfriend got that from me from one of his vendors, and that was the last one she had. If she'd had an extra, believe me, I would have given it to you, Sonia. But, um, yeah, that one. And also this bag, too. My boyfriend sells this bag. Ooh, I'm trying to watch myself on camera. And he got it embroidered with my initials, uh, which I thought was really sweet. Uh, so that was a birthday gift, I think, about a year ago. So, yeah, good eye. You paid attention. <laughs> I'll have to make it a little harder next time. Um, so right after I got stuff from campus, um, of course we have to go to the grocery store because we have to get a couple of things because now that my boyfriend is home, he likes to cook, and so he's spending his afternoons experimenting, trying dishes. Uh, so we're eating very well, and that's why I have to keep working out and doing my yoga, otherwise I'm just going to gain. I already gained 30 pounds since I started dating him because of all the rich food that we eat, <laughs> so I have to make sure that I don't gain even more. So. Ah, uh, yeah, Sonia, but yeah, I love it. It's my favorite. All right, so uh, we went to the grocery store. We actually ended up going to two, uh, but we were not there very long, at the most 10 minutes, if less. We had to, We went to the Asian grocery store in Carrollton, 99 Ranch, because that's where they have, of course, fresh uh, fruit and vegetables that are cheaper. Um, I get my ginger tea there. I, I stocked up on uh, Vietnamese coffee because we were out, so we were in a coffee crisis. Uh, well, it's not even Vietnamese. It's it's French. It's ca it's New Orleans Cafe Du Monde coffee, but they only sell it in the Vietnamese stores um, and some of the Asian stores. So hi there, glad you joined us, and um, got my little. It's called Hepsing. Maybe some of you know they're these crackers, but they're sugar crackers from China. They are amazing. So if I had any, I would share them with you. I'll show you next time when I'm on. So uh, we went to the Asian grocery store, and of course, every person we see, it's 90% Asian customers, and everybody is wearing a mask, okay? And all the workers are wearing masks and gloves, and everyone, even just getting in line to check out, everyone's keeping their distance. Uh, by the way, some of you might have seen my post, I did make a mask. So that's what I worked on, and in fact, um, my boyfriend as well, he made his own, which is, oh my God, it's like ginormous and so thick. Um, but I wanted to show you, um, it's still not perfect, and I don't even want to show you the first draft one, but the point is that you have to be willing to make a thousand mistakes before you finally master it. I am still very rusty with my sewing skills. I need to practice, and of course, it's a new machine. I'm not going to put it on because I have makeup on, otherwise I'll ruin it. It even has a little, a little filter that I put in there as well, so I got extra protection. <laughs> so what's funny is that all the Asians were staring at my boyfriend and I, I think because our masks were just so fashionable <laughs> and just so trendy. So hi there, glad you joined us. So I thought that was funny, but I have all kinds of material. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to mass produce these to donate to hospitals. I will certainly try, but this was at least two hours just to like get everything just right and figure this stuff out. Um, but I think in the act of repetition, it will get better. So we'll see. I think for right now, I'm going to make masks for my family. Um, there's a lot of family members. Um, and of course, I want to make one for my mom and my brother. So I'm going to start from there, and then we'll see how it goes. And I only have so much material as well. So, But the point is, I want a lot of my students are always like, oh, I can't do crafts, or I'm... You know, I've never done art or this or that. And the thing is, we are all beginners at everything we try, especially when you first go to college. And so, um, for example, when I started learning to crochet, I hadn't crocheted since I was in middle school. And so I had a friend in Austin that gave me a quick tutorial, and then of course I don't remember it, so I had to go back on YouTube and learn everything. And trust me, in the beginning, I was about to give up every day. Because look at, I brought some samples, I keep them, and I was actually gonna show these when I had my face-to-face -face classes. But look at some of my first projects. Um, yeah, does that look like anything to you guys? Um, yeah, it, it's basically a penis. I, I, <laughs> I, kept, I couldn't figure out what was going on with my crochet. <laughs> I kept dropping a stitch. So again, you're gonna have to make some penises in the beginning. You're gonna have to make shit art to figure out all the problems, okay? And then, you know, the other hard thing about crocheting is then you have to figure out your tension. And look at this shit. Like in some areas, it's the holes are so wide and others it's super tight. And my hand would cramp. 
And I mean, it's just, you know, I'm like, good Lord, it's like an eye mask, okay? But over time and persistence, and you try again and you try again, eventually, started getting a little bit better. So I started making pot holders and I started learning and understanding the tension and getting out of my head and trying to find my own method that worked. Okay. And then I'm real proud of this pot holder. Look at that. I did a two tone, but look how, look at how tight those holes are. So there you go. So, you know, while you're home during this, you know, shelter in place, be willing to try something new because you never know. And yeah, you're gonna suck at it the first time, the second time, the tenth time. Um, but eventually, see look, I even got a little fancier. I figured out circles. So I go on YouTube and I, I try new things. I see something that catches my attention. I made a baby blanket for a, a cousin that was having a baby. This is the one I'm working on right now for my mom. And I know it's already, what, end of March. So I'm a little behind. But since I've been home, this is my project at night before I go to bed. So I have projects upstairs, I have projects downstairs. And let me show you, this is the blanket. It's a chenille, it's real soft. I got the material at Joann's, you can even order it on Amazon. And by the way, look at this giant ass hook. But again, I got tired of the real tiny ones and I love that I can move much faster through it. So I'm gonna do a white for her, an off-white. And then she loves pink, and then I'm gonna do kind of a, an off pink. Hi, Erin, good to see you. I'm so glad you're showing us. I'm just showing them all of my crafts um, and how I learned from failure. And so I'm hoping to have this finished hopefully by the end of this week. So when I go visit her, because it does get chilly in the house, you know? So it's a good like summer throw blanket over the couch while she's watching TV. So yeah. So I just want, I like showing you guys my crafts and different stuff, and I'll show you other techniques. So if you're curious about anything, then you can go on your own on YouTube or whenever, and you can start taking a look. So, Michaels has curbside pickup. Oh my God, why did you tell me that? Oh no, my boyfriend's gonna kill me. So I'm gonna do that. Thank you for sharing that. Oh my goodness, yes, and Amazon too, which is a little pricey sometimes, so. Okay, so we talked about I went out to campus uh, to get my stuff. Oh, uh, okay, back to the grocery store thing. So I went to the Asian grocery store, had my mask on, we got our stuff, we were there maybe 10 minutes. And then of course, on the way home, we're like, oh crap, we forgot mushrooms. Apparently he needs mushrooms for his experimental cooking today. Um, whatever we have for dinner, I'll I usually post it so you can see all the beautiful meals that we're getting to have. Um, it is really nice to have to shelter in with someone that loves to cook. So yes, I am eating well. Um, but then we went to Tom Thumb. <laughs> and you talk about night and day attitudes towards this virus. It was mostly older people because it was around um, 10.30 in the morning, 10.30ish. And nobody had a mask on. My boyfriend and I were the only ones wearing a mask. And it's mostly older generation and mostly white, male and female. <laughs> and you could tell, again, people were looking at us looking at our mask, but I'm sure we just look not. But you know what? I've been watching some of the posts of my friends and some of my friends are really taking it seriously, are very paranoid, are spraying their packages. Even though I saw on the news that you're not gonna get the virus if you pick up a package from outside. Um, but, and some people are obsessively washing their hands, but I'm like, but you haven't left the house, so why are you worried about germs? So, um, you know, the main thing is I, it's good to have a healthy fear. Yes, and take precaution, but make sure you're not taking it to such an X amount of an extreme, you know, that it becomes kind of obsessive compulsive. So that's my only worry about some of this. If you watch a CBS Sunday Morning, um, they do a really good series, and they talked about how fear can lead to kind of these erratic behaviors, and that's why people go and hoard toilet paper, and you see fighting in the aisles. Uh, if they usually post the video on YouTube. If I find it, I'll share it with you. I thought it was really informative. So it's you gotta find that fine line between healthy fear and concern versus doomsday prepper level. So, um, so I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everyone is staying healthy, doing good. Um, yeah, it, it's just it's it was kind of surreal. The campus was so quiet today, and I wanted to shoot some video, but I also wanted to get the hell out of there, so I didn't. But I didn't even see any wildlife. I didn't see the geese. I didn't see the ducks. And it was just kind of sad. It's like there's no life here. There's no students. No one in the hallways. I saw a couple of others 
pandemic got documentary called Pandemic on Netflix. Oh, okay, I will check it out. I've been kind of leery. I still never have seen the movie Outbreak, and now it's like the number one movie everyone's watching. And I'm like, is that really healthy for me right now? So, but I might. I'm. I love a good documentary, so I'm sure I will end up checking it out. So, okay, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. You guys give such great advice. I love it. Okay, so we talked about masks, learning from failure. I'm curious, did anyone try the do nothing challenge? That's what I'm wondering. Um, for those of you that were not here last time, I issued this kind of challenge where you find 30 minutes and you sit somewhere or lay down somewhere, either outside or in your house, and you do absolutely nothing for 30 minutes. And that means no technology, no music, no TV, just you on your own. And you just set a timer and you can't look at the timer put your phone face down, put it away, and um, and see that what that experience is like. And especially now that we are having to be housebound, apartment bound, uh, I was curious to see. Uh, I am gonna offer it as an extra credit assignment for my students taking face-to-face, -face, so I will put it on, and, and for the online as well, don't worry. And so I will put that on the assignment on eCampus um, when I get all of my stuff organized. Uh, so if you get a chance to do it, I hope you'll consider it. Um, what I wanted to share with you is the point of that is that that's how many of our artists and musicians really go to those deep places within themselves because they allow their brain to kind of settle, to stop thinking about all the thousand different things that go through and just kind of reflect and consider what what's going on in the world. It's self-reflection, it's self-renewal, uh, it's very brave to do it. Um, it's also people meditate when they do that and when you can listen to your own inner voice There is something about it. It's a very powerful experience. So I hope you will continue to try and do it um, I did mine. Well, I did one Saturday evening and then I'll probably do it again. I do it every so often um, Just to make sure I check in with myself and give myself a chance to have the, the deeper thoughts and the connections and not be distracted by a thousand things constantly over time so that's what I wanted to share, okay? All right, well, I had promised some Latinx trivia, and I wanted to do that uh, for today. Let's see, Tandy said, I sat in my backyard underneath my covered deck and listened to the rain. Oh, I'm so glad you did it. It is, when you get a chance to just listen to nature, just to hear the birds singing, to hear the trees rustling, uh, just to watch my dog. <laughs> look for bunnies in the backyard. I'm so glad you did that experience. Uh, for a lot of us, it can be a very, very healing process and a very kind of help us de-stress a lot with our anxiety. So, okay, well, Tandy did it, I've done it. I hope other people do the 30-minute um, challenge. I cannot stress enough how, how important it is. Okay, so let's do a little bit of Latinx trivia. So I wrote down some questions, and I'll give you the options, and then in your on your phone or whatever, you can type in which answer you think. So, uh, and this one is for Sonia. I thought of Sonia when this one came up. Um, so my question is, I'm going to hold it up. Which Selena song, in your opinion, is the best song? Which of these is her best? So again, if you have never listened to Selena, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna revoke your Latino card <laughs> because Selena is on this next level. The thing about Latino culture is we revere our famous people and we love our musicians and we put them on these pedestals. And the reason why I can say that honestly is because uh, my grandfather was a famous singer in Mexico, and let me tell you, his fans are diehard fans. So let me read the questions for you. So which is Selena's best song? Is it A, Dreaming of You? Is it B, No Me Queda Mas? Is it C, Amor Por Prohibido? I can't speak Spanish very well. Or D, Como La Flor, which do you like? A, hands down is what someone said. Someone else said C. German says A or D. Anyone else? C, okay. Wow, I like Como La Flor as well. I always thought, and then they, they would sell the roses at the concerts. Tandy says C. I love them all, honestly. Um, Sonia, did you weigh in yet? Sonia, do you have a favorite? Sonia is a diehard Selena fan because I, she wears the t-shirt and everything else. Um, 
Okay, someone else said C, someone else said D. All right, well, we'll hear from Sonia here in just a minute. My, my feed is a little bit on delay, so. Okay, so a lot of good songs. Ah, Sonia says yes, all of them, but you don't have a favorite, I guess. You just like them all. Okay, that works. Dreaming of You, and honestly, Dreaming of You, it was the crossover song that um, she sang in English, and that's when she was starting to do the Latin crossover. And so around that time period, you know, other non-Latinos were starting to hear her music. And so she was, that's what makes her, her death so tragic, is that she was just on the cusp of just going supernova with her career. Um, so it's like, I can't choose. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And that's what made it, it makes it so heartbreaking. And the reason why I remember her passing away is that it's the same week that a dear childhood friend of mine was brutally murdered um, outside of a blockbuster. And I've known this girl since I was in third grade and they never caught who did it to this day. It's a cold case. Um, but I just remember it was a shitty week. We lost Selena, we lost my, my good childhood friend. And yeah, um, just hard to believe that it's been over 20 years now since any of that happened. But then eventually we did have the Latino crossover with Ricky Martin and, J and J Lo and all of that. Yes, you bought the magazine. I still have mine as well because I wanted to remember it. I did the same thing. I have mine somewhere in my scrapbooks, so. All right, so let's try the next question. All right, and this one is actually for German. I thought of German uh, with this one. Okay, so it says, which Latin singer has the best grito? Okay, do you know what a grito is? It's that, uh, I'm not even gonna do it, so don't even ask me. It's that yell that they do when you hear Spanish music. Um, I bet if we could get German to record it, he could do it <laughs> really well. So is it A, Pedro Infante? Is it B, Juan Gabriel? Is it C, Luis Miguel? Or is it D, Vicente Fernandez? Okay, so A, Pedro, B, Juan, C, Luis, or D, Vicente? So what do you think? And those of you that are not sure of these singers, maybe make a guess. What do you, what do you think? But if you grew up in a Latino home, you've heard some of these. Uh, okay, everyone's saying D, really? Vicente Fernandez. Wow. Everyone is saying D. Okay. Okay. We're going with Vicente. Not Luis Miguel. <laughs> My mom says A. <laughs> oh. Um, I personally love Luis Miguel, but he's more modern. Um, I saw him in concert in Dallas. A. Everyone says A. Hi, Christopher. Good to see you. Chris, which has the best grito? We're trying to figure out who has the best yell. Now, um, I'll share a little cheese me with you, a little gossip. Um, one of my aunts, um, I, and I'm pretty sure it was Vicente Fernandez, but I'll have to double check. I think she dated him <laughs> when uh, she was a teenager and he was in his like mid to late 20s. It's a bit scandalous at the time, um, but she kind of talked fondly about her memories of him. Again, I will, I will, double check and report back. My mom knows. She'll tell me for sure. It's either Pedro Infante or Vicente Fernandez, but I'm pretty sure it was Vicente Fernandez. Um, a lot of um, bad girls in my mom's family, but not her. She was the same. So, <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Okay. So best group to Vicente Fernandez. All right. Okay. I have one more. And okay. It's which movie is a which do you consider a, consider a classic? Which is a classic film, okay? Is it A, Maria Full of Grace? Is it B, Motorcycle Diaries? Is it C, Fool's Rush In? And, or is it D, La Bamba, okay? Now, I didn't pick these because I know um, Selena is not in there as a classic, uh, but this is what the card had said. So this is based on majority rule, okay? So, have you seen Maria Full of Grace? It's actually a Colombian film. Um, really good film. I'm sure Natalia has seen it. Uh, okay, Chris says D. He says A, and then he changes his mind to D. German says D. La Bamba. Yeah, I would say La Bamba is a classic. It's a good film. Yeah, about Richie Valens. D, because it's the only one I've ever seen, not the others. 
It's the only one you bought. Okay, so let me tell you about the others in case you need a Latino movie list. So Maria Full of Grace, oh my goodness, you have to see this movie. It is about a Colombian girl who gets pregnant. And, you know, her boyfriend doesn't want to take care of it. He offers to marry her, and she's like, no, I don't want that life. She's working in a flower factory, you know, all the flowers we get for, like, Valentine's Day and whatnot. She's working in a factory there. She's not happy with that. She decides she wants to come to the U.S. Well, we have heard often about how drugs get smuggled from uh, Colombia. And so she swallows the white pellets. They wrap, they pack them real tight in a, in a condom, and then you swallow the condoms. And so she's flying an airplane with her stomach full of condoms, filled with cocaine. And if any of them break, she's dead. And um, let me tell you, those pellets are like ginormous. So after the end of the film, I'm like, I couldn't swallow. I was just like, how, how she did it, I won't tell you how she survived, what happened. It is really powerful. And it reminds us to be grateful about, you know, the, what and to respect what people are willing to go through to be able to come to this country. And so, um, oh my gosh, it's a life-changing film. It's one of those films that often when I think about it, it is really powerful. Um, yes, the actress, that really put her on the map. I love that actress. I've seen her in some other things as well. So, I mean, unfortunately, it, it reinforces the stereotype of, you know, co of cocaine and drugs from Colombia, which I don't like that part. But it's all in Spanish, and, and I've learned that the Spanish they speak, it's so different. It's so polite. Um, it's so... I just, I enjoy it. It's very different from Mexican Spanish or um, Guatemalan Spanish or Honduran Spanish. So I love that you can hear the nuances. Yes, you have to watch it. You'll, I'll see where, it might be on Amazon. We'll have to find where it's at. Okay, and then Motorcycle Diaries. Oh my goodness. And I was actually going to recommend this to my history students when we talked about um, 60s and Che Guevara. Hopefully you know who Che Guevara is. He's the revolutionary that helped overthrow the Cuban government. He's on many a t-shirt. I'm sure some of you have that t-shirt in your closet. Um, at one point there was even a restaurant in Dallas called Che. But this film, Motorcycle Diaries, is about when he's younger. What most people don't know is that this, you know, communist revolutionary with, grew up privileged in Argentina, grew up from a upper middle class home, was studying to go to medical school, and was in medical school, and he and his friend decide during the summer off, they fix up an old motorcycle bike, and they decide to just ride the bike all through South America. So they go into Chile, they go up to Peru, they go to the other countries, and while they're there, it's part of the series, oh, okay, it's at the library, well, Okay, it's, I'll look for it. It might be on Canopy as well. And while he's on that journey, he goes to a leper colony. And if you know anything about leprosy, it's this horrible disease that some people get where you get kind of skin. It's like fingers fall off and, and you know parts of your skin are damaged and no one wants to touch you and you're kind of kicked out of society because it's in the Bible. And in the Bible, lepers are kind of repulsed. So they're kind of shunned by people, and yet they're sick people that need help. And so you see a very young Che Guevara, before he becomes a revolutionary, realize that there is a way to truly help people, and it's really to help them uplift their governments and have social progress and making sure they're getting education and, and their health care. And so um, it really, it's another really beautiful film. So if you get a chance, watch Motorcycle Diaries as well. And then Fool's Russian. I can't believe some of you haven't seen that. Um, I don't know how it's transmitted by armadillos. Honestly, I'm not that familiar with leprosy. I just, um, I just know that people just have a very strong reaction to it um, in terms of just the stigma because it comes from a it comes from the Bible and people in the Bible that had leprosy were just kind of shunned. So, so it has that that other stigma on top of it. So I need to do some more research. So I'll get back to you on that. Um, Fool's Russian. I can't believe anyone hasn't seen that. That was Selma Hayek movie. Um, remember the guy Chandler from Friends? For some reason, Friends has made a comeback. Everyone loves Friends. Well, if you love Friends, you gotta see Fool's Russian because Chandler plays the love interest of Selma Hayek. They have a one-night stand. She gets pregnant. And you can imagine telling your traditional Mexican father that you had a quickie Vegas marriage to a white guy. 
And then, of course, hilarity ensues. So it's actually a really cute film. I actually like it. I think Selma Hayek kind of overdoes kind of the, the Latin stereotypes of just exaggerations and religion. But if you're willing to kind of overlook that part of it, yeah, it's a cute film. It really is. Uh, and you kind of see when you marry into a Latino family, <laughs> always the one mother or grandmother like, eat, eat, why are you not eating enough? And asking questions and, you know, awkwardness and... Um, so yeah, and I can certainly identify with it because I'm dating someone who has a large Indian family and we have learned that Indian families and Hispanic families, not so different in terms of the same kind of aunts and uncles and questions and, and obstacles that we kind of face. So, so yeah, there you go. So those were my three questions that I had. Um, yeah, just to talk more about Latina culture and, um, just know that, of course, the campus is closed this week, and uh, I am busy prepping for my classes. I know you guys are waiting to get started on assignments. I've actually been so focused on helping other faculty because I had to make videos for them, help them figure out technology, So, and i got to get grades in for one of my online classes, so i got to get all that done. So hopefully within the next couple of days, I will be geared up, ready to go. I know many of you are anxious to get started. So I do, I appreciate your patience. And please be just a little more patient with your other faculty. Um, I saw last night on the WhatsApp group text with the club, some people are like, oh my God, I've never done an online class, and what, you know, what am I going to do? And I just want to put this in perspective, okay? Technically, what you're doing is not really that much different than the face-to-face, -face, okay? For the online, really think about it. What's going to change is maybe how you're submitting the assignment. Um, how the lectures are going to be conveyed. Probably a lot of professors are going to do discussion boards. Well, my class students, we already do discussion boards. Others are going to find ways to do videos to talk through their lectures. So it's going to be a couple of little things that's going to change. And if you're not familiar with eCampus, trust me, there's tutorials, there's the help desk, your professor will help you, I will help you if you get stuck. I can make you a video and walk you through how to use eCampus if it gets to that point. So just know that you are at an amazing college and the professors we all care about you we're all concerned for you I've also been asked to find out if any of you do not have technology at home if you don't have a laptop if you don't have access to internet to let me know because they want me to send a list up to administration because they're trying to work out some kind of way to help those students that don't have access to direct technology okay so I'll send an email out as well probably I'll do like a survey or something just to see if you are in need, we want to make sure we have some kind of alternatives for you so that you can get your work done, okay? Um, hi, good to see you. Someone just joined. And so um, just be a little patient with us, and we will get there. And don't worry. Don't. I know it sucks. I Believe me, I miss my face to face. I miss seeing Tandy in class every day, and I miss all the students that want to speak up. Um, I don't miss the students that were always hiding on their phones and not engaging in class. That I don't miss. <laughs> so um, maybe they'll learn to appreciate the fact that they got to sit in a classroom. Um, and now I'm being mean. I better stop. Um, but no, it'll be fine. And for my classes, I am going to do, uh, because I do have a little bit more knowledge of technology, I will do um, voiceover lectures through my PowerPoint. And we'll still do the check-ins. So we will be okay. And remember, this is just one moment in history. Next semester, hopefully things will be back to normal. A year from now, two years, five, ten, we'll look back and we'll be like, hey, remember that crazy time when I would check in and watch one of the professors talk about her life? How crazy is that? So, <laughs> so anyway, well, I hope you're doing well. I thought we might end today's session with doing some breathing exercises as a way to close out. And then I gotta get my ass back to grading <laughs> and get caught up and get work done, so. Um, so that's, I've already had quite the day. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit comfortable. So you too, find a comfortable position, okay? And uh, if you need to hold your one phone in your hand and do the hand and just do like that, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm gonna use both hands, okay? By the way, did you like my top? Um, I actually bought this when I was in Singapore. They have some fabulous shops, lots of Indian shops, and this is the one top I saw, and I'm like, I have to buy it. Um, Someday, if you have the travel bug, you have to, um, I'm going to tell my kids I survived the apocalypse. Absolutely, you're going to tell your kids that. And um, I'm going to wear all of my Indian outfits before it ends. <laughs> Maybe by the time I run out of Indian outfits, then I'll stop doing the life check-ins. <laughs> so, 
Um, but this, if you get a chance, thank you, I appreciate it. If you get a chance, you've got to go to Singapore one of these days. You talk about the cleanest city ever, and they are not kidding. They have the best airport. Their airport has a movie theater in it, and a shopping mall, and incredible shops, and all kinds of, like, fountains and art. I mean, you could just spend a day at the airport. That's how amazing the country is. Um, and they, they were really, you know, cracking down on, not, on trying to flatten that curve when people were getting sick. They, they're offering, you know, free health care and testing for anyone that needs it. And um, just the people that I've met there. I mean, you talk about a rich culture and so amazing. And you talk about a country that has diversity in action. Like you go on their metro system and you know all the signs that you see, like watch your step? It's in English. It's in Chinese. It's in, it's in Arabic. It's in so many languages because there's so many different cultures that live in one area. You have a mosque right here, and then literally down the street at the end of the corner, you have a Jewish temple. And then you have a Christian church across the street. And everybody just seems to get along, and it works well. Now, fair to say, some of their, like, you don't ever want to get arrested in Singapore. I don't know if you guys heard the famous case back in the, like, 90s. Some American embassy kid broke some, you know, destroyed some cars, he vandalized some cars, and he got caned. As punishment and I, I remember Americans were all up in arms but let me tell you Singapore is no joke so when you break their laws yeah there's punishment but when you look at how they live and their lifestyle of course my teenager loves it because there's a lot of multi-millionaires that live on that tiny little island so there are Lamborghinis everywhere and there's Audis and there's Porsches and he was just loving that so the other downside of Singapore is that it's very expensive so if you are successful someday and you want to live someplace fabulous, Singapore is the place to go. But to visit, it's wonderful. The food is amazing. All these different centers, all these different fresh um, things to try and seafood. So I can't say enough about it. Okay. All right. So let's do some breathing exercises. And then um, we'll do our check-in tomorrow. I think we're going to have one of the officers possibly host a day, either maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll find out for sure. And yeah, I'll just keep doing the check-ins, all right? I'm so glad you um, came to see me today. All right, so we're gonna start kind of our hands here. We're gonna close our eyes. We're gonna take in a deep breath through our nose. Remember, make that sniffing sound. Hold it for a second. And out through your mouth and make the ha sound, okay? Let's do it one more time. Through the nose and out through the mouth, all right? This time I'm gonna actually put my hands in prayer position, namaste position, you can do it like that or you can just have them out, whatever is more comfortable for you. And as you take in a breath, you're gonna rise your hands up to the ceiling. So we're gonna breathe in, all the way to the top, big, big breath, hold it for a second, and then out. Make sure you're making the ha sound, okay? All right, let's do it again. So our hands together at our chest, and then we go up, inhale. All the way to the top. And then out. Hands together, inhale. All the way to the top. And then out. together. We're going to inhale. Hold it. Hold it. And then out. And let's do one more. So let's put our hands together. And we're going to inhale. Take your biggest breath of the day. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And then out. I want to thank you for joining me and I hope that we will get through all of this together that you stay healthy you stay happy if you get a fever if anything happens let me know I will send you positive energy your way and thank you so much for joining our check-ins and I hope to see you tomorrow so I'll give you a blessing namaste thank you for coming and I'll see you hi Elizabeth I'm so glad you joined us I'm just now ending the session though but 
I'll post the video so if you missed it, you can see the earlier part. Okay, I'll see you guys. Bye.